What's going on sixpackabs.com? It's Thomas DeLauer, your lead nutritionist, and today I wanna to talk about fats. I wanna talk about good fats, bad fats, but I don't wanna just give you the lame details that you're gonna find everywhere. I wanna give you the details and how they pertain to you and how it might be important to really take the knowledge you learned from this video and apply it into your intermittent fasting lifestyle. Let's talk about monounsaturated fats first, okay? Monounsaturated fats contain one unsaturated carbon bond. Okay, so when you look at a fat, for instance, a saturated fat has all of the carbon bonds occupied, basically meaning that they're all one solid fat. That's why it's saturated. Monounsaturated means that you have one carbon bond that is unsaturated, hence the word mono. So what that ultimately means is you've got a fat that's almost a saturated fat that has a lot of the positive properties of a saturated fat, but without being saturated. Now, what this means is that it's gonna be liquid when it's at room temperature, but if you were to put something like olive oil or something like avocado oil or something like many different nut oils in the fridge or chill them beyond what's normal, you might find that they start to solidify or at least get a little bit more viscous. That's because again, they're almost a saturated fat. So again, we're talking about avocado oils, we're talking about things like uh, olive oil, certain kinds depending on the quality, and we're talking about a lot of oils that come from things like cashews, things like almonds and all that stuff. Now, let's talk about the facts with it and what they can do for you. So first off, let's break it down into oleic acid and palmitoleic. Oleic acid is known as omega-9. Now, omega-9 is really unique. You see, because what omega-9 does is it not only reduces blood pressure, but it also can occupy a specific part of the cell, making it so that it's extra protected. Let me start with the blood pressure thing first. Omega-9 is very, very powerful at reducing blood pressure. And it doesn't matter how old you are, this is something you should be cognizant of. It does this because it works on something known as the adrenoceptor. Now, adrenoceptor signaling is the brain's ability to communicate with the blood vessels to dilate and constrict and regulate blood pressure. Omega-9 has a massive amount of control over this adrenoceptor signaling. So high amounts of omega-9, healthy fats like avocados, are going to help your blood pressure in the long run. So much for that whole low-fat diet thing to help your heart, right? Now, the other thing that I was gonna say about omega-9s is the fact they actually protect your cell membrane. You see, normally you have omega-3s and omega-6s that are protecting your cell, and that's great, they do a decent job, but omega-9s actually boot them out of the way and stand guard. And remember, omega-9s are almost like a saturated fat, so they end up being very, very strong, very, very sturdy, and they can protect the cell from a lot of different free radicals and lipid peroxidation where the cell can go sour because of bad fats. Okay, now let's talk about the next one, which is known as palmitoleic acid, also known as omega-7. See, omega-7 is very, very unique because not only does it help the body utilize fats more efficiently, it also ends up dramatically reducing insulin resistance. Now, here's the thing with insulin, especially when you're fasting, you want to make sure your insulin resistance is low you want high levels of insulin sensitivity because that means when you do eat, your body's gonna be very receptive to what you eat. Very important for when you're fasting. Now it does this because it works directly with pancreatic beta cells. Pancreatic beta cells are what actually signal insulin in the body. So when your beta cells are not healthy, they don't work very well. And the way that omega-7s do this is they act as a protective barrier surrounding those pancreatic beta cells, making it so that they don't become toxified by the glucose. So basically what can end up happening is when you're consuming a lot of carbohydrates, the pancreas can go bad. I shouldn't say it goes bad, but the cells become a little bit more toxic. And when this toxic effect hits, it makes it so they don't produce as much in the way of insulin, making it so the carbs that you're consuming are just floating around through the body, causing problems. Okay, now let me drop some knowledge on you when it comes down to inflammation. Because you may not think about it right now, but inflammation is affecting you when it comes down to how you recover from your workouts and how much fat you actually burn. Okay, and the Cleveland Clinic did a study. They took a large group of people, predominantly people that were overweight and were suffering with inflammation, and they put them on a little study. Okay, for 30 days, they gave half the group a placebo, and the other half of the group, they gave them 220 milligrams of omega-7s every day. Well, what they found is at the end of this 30 days, the group that took the omega-7s ended up having a 44% reduction in C-reactive protein levels, direct correlation with reducing inflammation. Pretty powerful there. If that doesn't sell you, then I don't know what will. Okay, now let's talk about polyunsaturated fats for a second. Remember how I talked about monounsaturated fats and how they are just having one carbon bond that isn't there? Okay, well, let's talk about polyunsaturated. That's when they have two or more. Again, hence the word poly. 
Now, these have a lot of different properties in the body. They're a little less protective and more advantageous in terms of pushing your body along to do better. And predominantly comes down from the omega-3s. We're talking about eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid. I'm not gonna ask you to repeat that three times fast, okay? But EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, produces something called eicosanoids. These eicosanoids actually go out and fight inflammation in the body. They're really, really powerful. Now, hear me out, because eicosanoids can actually work to a disadvantage if you're not careful, and I'll get to that in just a second. Okay, so then we also have docosahexaenoic acid, which is predominantly what fuels your brain. Why do you want this when you're fasting? Well, when you want it when you break your fast, it's gonna help bring your brain back to life. 8% of your brain's weight is actually omega-3s, predominantly docosahexaenoic acid. Then we have alpha-linoleic acid. Alpha-linoleic acid is another omega-3 that you're gonna find in things like flax, you're gonna find it in chia. Here's the problem. It's an 18 carbon chain fat, which means the body has to go through a lot of work and a lot of process to actually convert it into a usable form. I'm not saying that those fats are bad. They're still a good solid omega-3. They just take a little bit more work to convert than the traditional fish oil or algal oil where you'd get the typical EPA and DHA. Now that I've talked about the omega-3s, let me talk about the omega-6s for one second. Omega-6s are the ones that you're gonna find in the so-called healthy fats. The canola oil, the safflower oil, the vegetable oil. The ones that always say, hey, it's not a saturated fat, so it's gotta be healthy, right? Totally wrong. Omega-6s are not what you wanna be getting a lot of. You see, omega-6s also produce those eicosanoids, the same things the omega-3s produce, except they work a little bit differently. These eicosanoids are actually pro-inflammatory. They go out through the body and they trigger inflammation. And here's the problem. They have the same kind of end that the omega-3s have. What I mean by that is their butt is the same shape as the chair that the omega-3 requires. Meaning if the omega-6s come along, they're gonna plop their butt right in that chair and take the place of an omega-3. So if you consume too much in the way of omega-6, you got a lot of inflammation happening. All right, let me touch on trans fats really quick and I promise I'm gonna start wrapping this up. Trans fats are mechanically altered fats, period, okay? Remember how I talked about having those multiple carbon chains that are occupied to create a saturated fat? Well, a trans fat is where you manually are adding the saturation to make it a saturated fat to make it more stable. I'm just gonna give it to you the straight facts. It takes 51 days to start breaking down trans fats. The body doesn't know how to process them and they're extremely, extremely dangerous because of that. They actually block the numbers one and three prostaglandins, which are normally the prostaglandins that go out and trigger the response to inflammation to fight it but they allow the number two prostaglandins. These trans fats are super dangerous because they literally will go out and trigger inflammation and trigger problems throughout your body. These are things you wanna stay away from. That means the Cool Whip. Definitely wanna stay away from the Cool Whip and stuff like that that has that partially hydrogenated soybean oil. Stay away from that hardcore. All right, but before I close out this video, let me talk about good old fashioned regular saturated fats. I'm talking about coconut oil, I'm talking about palm oil, I'm talking about fats that come from animals that are sustainably and ethically raised. Saturated fat is not bad. Okay, and I'm gonna reference one study that's gonna wrap this up for you and make it a big impact. This was a large meta-analysis that took a look at 21 different studies and a collective total of 348,000 participants. They took a look at their diets really, really intently. And what they found was there was zero correlation between stroke and cardiovascular risk with those that consumed high amounts of saturated fats versus those that consumed high amounts of regular fats really no difference. And that's just one study. There's a multitude of other ones that I'm gonna save for other videos. The point is moderation, okay? Saturated fats are good for your immune system. Saturated fats are tremendously powerful for your brain health. And saturated fats can actually be really good for a number of different things in the body, despite what the mainstream media leads us to believe. We just have to make sure that everything's in moderation and that you're not combining them with certain foods. So as always, make sure you keep it locked in here at sixpackabs.com and make sure that you check out the new science-based six-pack program that is in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video, six-pack.